Today we're going to work a titration problem. Now this is a standard titration problem where you're actually given all of the uh, values to use as opposed to the one we'll do later where you have to produce them. The bottom line is, is you still have the same points if we're going to take a look at them. Zero base added. This is a weak acid problem. So it's a simple Ka. Um, when I do the math, I determine that this is the end point or the equivalence point more accurately. Um, so this is a salt problem. This is after equivalence point, so it will be a strong base problem. That means these two are between the weak acid and the end point, so these two will be buffers. Okay, now we need the Ka, all right, is given to us. First thing I like to do is to determine the millimoles of the acid added. Now remember, molarity is equal to moles per liter. If you take and multiply it by the liter, you get moles. If you do the same thing where it's millimoles per milliliter, that's still molarity. Okay, you multiply it by the milliliters, then you're left with millimoles. You can work in either one, it doesn't matter, but because we're running a reaction here of an acid with the base, you need to go to moles because it's like the stoichiometry problems we did in the first chemistry. So when we do that, we determine that we have 15.66 millimoles of the phenylacetic acid. Now, that is kind of a mouthful, so I'm going to call this acid H-fen only because I don't want to write phenylacetic acid. And remember, when you're working with problems, depending upon who you're working for, you can designate them as something simple, more simple. If you choose as long as the person grading it, let's be honest, that's what counts, um, is okay with that. All right, so now we've got our basics out. So let's start with our weak acid. Now I'm going to start on this sheet and continue working onto another as I need it. Okay, so for A, we have a simple weak acid, so we're going to do our ICE table because it's a simple equilibrium. So we're going to have the acid just dissociate. We're going to start with the initial amount for our ICE table, which is 0.360. Zero. Initially, we're going to lose x, gain x, gain x here, so it's 0 0.360 minus x, x, and x. So, this simple Ka, so remember Ka is going to be equal to H plus times the conjugate base over the weak acid, which then so our Ka value, which we're given, is 4.5 times 10 to the minus fifth. It's going to be equal to x squared divided by 0 0.360 minus x. Now, for space sake, I'm going to continue working this direction because I have more room here. So I'm going to end up with x squared plus 4.5 times 10 to the minus fifth x minus 1.62 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to zero. We solve it using our quadratic. So we get x is equal to 0 0.004002485. Um, we're going to stick with four digits, non-zero digits after the decimal. So we're going to use this number. Now remember, this is the hydronium ion concentration, which means that we can take the negative log of it and get the pH. So the pH here is 2.3977. Okay? So we've done step A. Step B and C are buffer problems. 
So for B, um, because we have the base, the strong base, and it's going to be adding to the weak acid in producing the weak base, let's go ahead and set up an equation because it makes bookkeeping of the numbers easier. Now, unlike the previous equation, this is not an equilibrium. This is a one-way arrow. If we look at the amount of um, base added, we see that we've added 6.48 millimoles. Now, rather than having to keep rewriting, I'm going to write the unit over here and keep rolling. We said that we had 15.66 initially and zero of the conjugate base because none dissociated. So this is not an equilibrium, so we're not going to use X, but we, we do know that that much of the base will react with that much of the acid. And when it does that, it's going to produce that much of the conjugate base. If you remember back to when we talked about the leveling effect, that's basically what happens. The strong acid is leveled to the weak acid already in the system. So that gives us 9.18 millimoles here and 6.48 millimoles here. Buffer problem, so its pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base form, which in this case is Fen minus, over the weak acid, H Fen. Okay. So if we do our math, we find out our pKa is equal to um, 4.3468 because we just took the negative log of the Ka. So as we work the problem, our pH is going to be equal to 4.3468 plus the log of 6.48 divided by 9.18 millimoles. Now, buffers is the only place, whoops, millimoles, you can use molar moles versus molarity because it's the only place where you're in the same solution. So when you stack moles over liters, moles over liters, and the liters are the same, they cancel out. Any other time, salts, weeks, you must, even strongs, you have to do molarity. Okay? So I'm going to do the algebra and... Um, pH then is equal to 4.1955. So for that's B. C is another buffer zone problem. So we're going to set up the same equation because we have the same situation. Except when we go back, we're going to go back to the original amount, which is 15.66. Because it's cumulative, we're not adding... 12.7 milliliters in addition, we're having, adding a total of it. When we do that, we determine that this is 9.525 millimoles. Again, this is millimoles. Let's keep up with our details. So it's zero. So we're going to lose all of that here. Lose that amount here. Um, and gain that amount here. So this is going to go to 0, this is going to go to 6.135, and this is going to go to 9.525. Now, we're back to the pH problem. So pH is equal to the pKa, which is 4.346, whoops, 6, 8, plus the log of the base form, which is now 9.525 millimoles, over the acid, which is 6.135 millimoles. So our pH comes out to be uh, 4.5379. So we started with 2.3977. We've risen to 4.155 for our first edition of base. Our second edition is 4.5379. Now, the next step is the uh, endpoint or equivalence point. And I'm going to put another sheet of paper here to give myself plenty of room to work so that you can see. But it's just a continuation of the same problem. So now we're to point D. At point D, which is the salt problem, 
overall to me the salt problems are the most work. It's not, it's not a big deal, but it is more work. So what has happened is we have converted all of the acid to the conjugate base. So we have to regenerate the concentration unit here. So we know that we had 15.66 millimoles of our weak acid, which we've now converted to the weak base. But let's kind of step over here and say at the equivalence point, we added 20.88 milliliters. We started with 43.5 milliliters. So we now have a new volume of 64.30 milliliters. This is our total volume. So we're going to put it up here, 64.30. And remember, since we're working in millimoles, we need milliliters. When we do that, we find that we get 0.243243 molar. Now, one other thing about a salt is we need the, the value of it. It's a weak base. Weak bases need KAs excuse me, KBs, but we only have our KA. So remember, KB is KW divided by KA, which means it's 10 to the minus 14th divided by 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5th, which is equal to 2.2222, a lot of twos there, 10 to the minus 10. Okay, so now, I have my new concentration, I have my new K value. So, simple equation. But this time, it's an equilibrium. Whoops, because it's a base, I gotta add water. Um, to produce HFEN, I'm not sure why I put that in brackets, because I was just on a roll, and OH minus. So, we're gonna, we don't need, we do need in concentration, but here's our ICE table. Our initial concentration is 0.2432. We're gonna move to um, four significant digits. Water is the pretty much pure solution, so it drops out. We have zero and zero, minus X, plus X, plus X. So it's 0.2432 minus X, X, and X. Okay. Now again, this is a simple KB where it's H fin over OH minus divided by fin minus. Now we simply plug in our equilibrium values, which gives us uh, X squared divided by 0.2432 minus X is equal to 2.2222 times 10 to the minus 10th, assuming I don't go off the page there. So when I do the math, I get x squared plus 2.2222 times 10 to the minus 10x minus um, 5.4044 times 10 to the minus 11th equals zero. So we know that X is equal to 7.3514 times 10 to the minus 6, which, remember, is the hydroxide ion concentration. That means if I take the negative log of it, I have the pOH. So my pOH is equal to 5.1336. 14 minus the pOH is equal to the pH because remember pH plus pOH is equal to 14 and um, this value then P for pH is 8.8664 so now we're actually at the equivalence point this is a weak acid our salt is slightly basic so whether our math is right or not we know we're in the right ballpark so we've done D, and that brings us to E. Now, E is basically a strong base, but you've got to figure out how much you have. So when we do the math, we find out that we 
added 19.905 millimoles at 26.54 milliliters. But we had to react it with the acid, which remember all of the acid is 15.66. That leaves us with 4.245 millimoles of strong base left. So can we take the negative log of that? Not yet. We have to have it in molarity. So we need the molar concentration of hydroxide. So it's 4.245 millimoles of the strong base. Now, here's the fun part. What was our volume? Well, remember we started with 43.5 milliliters, and that was initial. We've added 26.54 milliliters. So that leaves us with a total of 70.04 milliliters total. Okay? So we've got our total moles. Now we have our total volume. So that gives us our total concentration, which is 0 0.06060822 molar. Again, we're going to restrict ourselves to four non-zero digits. So that will be 0 0.06061 molar hydroxide. Well, take the negative log of that. So we find that the pOH is equal to 1.2175. That means the pH is equal to 12.7825. So each time we have added the base, the pH should rise because it's becoming more basic, we've neutralized the acid. This is how you do a titration where all the values are given.